Holy Wire Mod here, and this is going to be tutorial 4D in the Expression 2 series where I'm going to cover apply force and apply offset force and go a little bit over fine functions as well. So let's begin by defining, actually let's put persist right here. We'll have vec type vector, and we'll have int of type entity, and an x which is going to act as a counter. So we're going to need to start with a if first or dupe statement. And then we'll say we want to find an entity to apply force to, so we use the find by command. And we have three variants we can find by name, class, or model. We're going to choose model, which will search for the given model and string right here, and put it on a list. And the entity with the matching model, or the first result on that list, which is represented by find here, first result on this list, will be assigned to entity. This can also be done by find result one. So let's get an entity real quick. Get this cube right here. And we'll copy the clipboard. And we'll right click uh, the chip right here and paste into there. And that's going to grab the model. And now we have this cube assigned as entity or int. So now we need to define a vector, which is going to be a composition of three different vectors. And the first one's going to be the center point where you want the cube to hover around or gravitate around or whatever you want to call it. So we'll say owner position. So I'm going to be the center point. Then you're going to subtract the position of the entity. And then you're going to add an offset vector, which is going to set the entity some x, y, and z coordinates away from the owner's feet. All right. And now we're going to need to use entity apply force and we'll put that vector there. Okay, let's see what happens. But actually, no, let's also add integral command right here, which is going to update the apply force mainly. And we have interval of 1000, so update every second just about. So as you see, force is getting applied every second. And if we reduce by a factor of 10, force is going to get applied more often, so it's going to move a little bit more. And let's do it by another 10. And now it's floating like a creeper stalker box or a companion cube. Oh, All right, so if we want to make that vector uh, have a little bit more punch or that apply force have a little bit more punch, we can multiply the entire vector by. Uh, generally, like I like to take um, the weight, but I'm going to show you what it's like without considering the weight. So just multiplying it by a factor of 10, you can see it's a lot more powerful. Now, considering that this thing, or this cube up here, sorry, cube, didn't mean to call you a thing, has a weight of 8. And if we multiply that 8 by a factor of 10, we'll apply force 80, and it's very stable using this number. Now, it can be even more stable by using this awesome formula right here, where you take the delta of the vector and multiply it by 5. And to take the delta, it must be in the persist section. And when you do that, it completely stabilizes the block above. Now, if you're using apply offset force, is a good um, example. You can use apply offset force to take a vector with respect to another vector, and you're applying force like that. It's not as stable with the formula if you're using the delta vector as the other, the second vector. But it gives a very similar effect. So let's go back to the apply force variant really quick. And we're going to make the uh, offset vector uh, have an x and y of two or 120. So it's going to set it way out there, 120 units respective directions. If I want to make it go in the circle around me, I can do that. Remember I have this x up here. I'm going to use that as a counter and say x equals x plus 1 every cycle where x is assigned to that. And you can also say x plus plus, which makes it increment every cycle of the expression 2 chip. And we will take that and consider that and say times an x position of this vector, cosine which remember cosine goes from negative, it goes from one to negative one. 
over a period of uh, being counted from 0 to 360 degrees. And sine does from negative 1 to 1 and all that stuff too. So the combination of this is going to make a circle. And it does, it makes it rotate. Now what's cool about you uh, doing this way is you can actually customize it a little bit more. But I'll show you that a little later. First, let's say you want to use this as a means to protect yourself against a bunch of zombies or some monsters attacking you. So we lower it down to 50. And so nothing can ca crawl under. We're going to make it a little wavy. So we can do that by adding 25 times sine of x, which is going to subtract a minimum of 25 from this 50 and add a maximum of 25 to this 50. So we're going to get values between uh, 25 and 75 as the height over a period of time. So if we want to make that go faster, we go into here and multiply this x by 10. And that's going up and down really fast. That's good. And we're going to now take advantage to the instability of apply offset force this variant. So now it's a little bit more unstable good. And now instead of taking 10 times the weight of the cube, which is 8, remember, we're going to take 1,000. And that will kill something. So let's get two more of these guys to cover both sides right here. So first we're going to take that list. Remember, find by model takes every entity on the map and puts it on the list with the matching model. So we're going to find result 2 and find result 3 on that list and assign that to entity 2 and entity 3, which will be defined here as a group of entities in the bracket. So we can uh, save some time. Same thing with vector. Put the bracket, or bracket, bracket. And put vec2, vec3. And now we're going to need corresponding vectors. So vec2 equal to blah 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 with int2 and vec3 blah 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 int3 and we're going to need apply force or apply offset force int2 int3 vec2 vec2 vec3 vec3 awesome so here we go and I'm going to go into no clip so I don't die and spawn two more cubes and refresh uh, refresh the trip chip black I have a speech impediment so here we go I refresh it, and you know there's one more issue to take care of, and that's actually spacing them out. And to do, do this, it's uh, really simple, which is why I like using sine and cosine here. Okay, so you can add right here, put 120, because remember, a circle is uh, 360 degrees, so we're using three cubes, so divide 360 by three, you get 120 degrees, so you want 120 degrees separation on your sine and cosine values right here and you want the next block to be 240 degrees, which is 120 times 2. So we have a 120 degree separation between all three blocks, like so. All right, that looks like it's going to work, so let's go into the bonus room. Da -da -da -da. And we will get a bunch of spawn creators and get a zombie apocalypse going on here. Oh no, a bunch of zombies and I have no weapon. So, I'm gonna spawn these handy blocks. But you know it's horrible? I didn't refresh my expression to do trip. Chip, blah. So, I'm gonna paste another one. Ah! Yes. Take that. So anyway, this concludes the tutorial on apply force and all that nonsense. I'm gonna get into apply angular force after that. And we're going to go over stabilization a little bit more and all that fun stuff. So I will see you the next time. And you have a wonderful day. Later.